the aim of the market restructuring is to build a foundation for listed companies to work towards corporate value improvement. And uh, so in the sense, the uh, important part is that, you know, uh, how those listed companies can use their selection of a new market segment as a kind of opportunity for change. So I would like to encourage everybody to focus not just a, a number of companies, but also the kind of the change inside of each company. You've mentioned before that you've been looking to attract more foreign companies to list uh, in mm -hmm. Japan. Mm -hmm. And indeed, there's been some success in um, convincing mm -hmm. some Asian com companies over sure. the past year mm -hmm. to, to list here. Um, what are you doing to, uh, to, to further this and to invite right, more um, companies? Yes, the Japanese IPO market has been strong in the past uh, couple of years. And also, um, TSE Mother's Market uh, is highly rated, among, especially among Asian startups, as the mother, in the mother's market, you can raise ample amount of capital, and also liquidity is high compared with other Asian markets. So uh, last year, 2021, we had five listings of uh, what we call cross-border companies. And uh, as uh, we have been doing a promotion, IPO promotions, especially in Asia, aimed at the, uh, those companies, I mean, those uh, Asian high growth companies with uh, cross-border uh, or in other words, uh, links to Japan. And uh, we are now seeing the uh, result uh, of it. And because of those five listings, now we are getting one more inquiries and also requests uh, for advice. So we have improved our you know, uh, information provision of a JPX um, uh, website, including those cross-border uh, companies listings. And I believe that you know, uh, for those cross-border companies with links to Japan, listing in Tokyo Stock Exchange would be a you know, optimal, optimal ways to improve their corporate value. And we will continue to work on uh, IPOs with those people who are in the IPO business in Asia. And uh, let me ask you as well about um, foreign investors' interest in Japan. Um, over the past you know, decade or so, I think we've seen a little bit of a declining interest from foreign investors in Japanese stocks. What do you think needs to be done? Uh, this moment still, you know, if you look at the cash equity market, uh, we still have a 60 to 65 percent of the everyday trading volume is uh, from the overseas investors. And if you look at the derivatives market, it's about 75 percent. So I think uh, still um, so many you know, uh, overseas investors have the uh, good interest over the Japanese market. But at the same time, we have to continue to improve the accessibility of our market and also the you know, attraction of the uh, uh, Japanese market from the viewpoint of the foreign investors, including English disclosure. So let me just uh, switch directions and ask you about um, something that a lot of investors have been talking about recently, and that's uh, Prime Minister Kishida's um, uh, vision of new capitalism. Uh, this has, you know, a lot of impact uh, on the market, and obviously it, it could be seen as a shift away from some of the policies, uh, maybe the more neoliberal policies um, of the last 10 years. What do you think is the impact of uh, the Prime Minister on the market? As uh, Mr. Suzuki, who is the uh, you know, financial services minister, he mentioned uh, at the, uh, his own press conference, and share buybacks is widely used to uh, return profits to uh, shareholders and uh, improve ROE. And uh, how to share out the profits from growth is you know, totally the decision of the management of each company after carefully taking you know, all the stakeholders into consideration. And I believe Mr. Kishida has a quite cautious stance uh, over the, on the uh, uniform regulation of uh, share buybacks. And uh, I think because he is giving a consideration to uh, each company's you know, individual circumstance and uh, say uh, decisions. So I don't think it is going to be a 
you know, impact over the capital markets. One other thing that Prime Minister Kishida has uh, mentioned as an engine for growth is to introduce SPACs, uh, special purpose acquisition companies, uh, into the Japanese market, and you have started uh, a study group to, to uh, examine that. Um, can you tell us uh, what do you think the advantages would be? Sure. Um, I, I think it is very important to nurture to uh, startups, and also it is important to promote diversification of uh, ways or financial methods for unlisted companies. I think that's for sure. But at the same time, I think, you know, um, structure of SPAC is uh, significantly different from that of the uh, conventional IPOs. So I think we need to, uh, we need uh, some sort of deliberations, including, uh, you know, from uh, investors' protection perspectives. And also, especially, uh, I, I, it is you know important to note that the investor, many investors in IPO market in all over the world, uh, say like uh, in the U.S. market, is so different from that of Japanese market. In Japan, the main investors in IPO market are individual investors. So we have to we have to carefully work out what issues are relevant in consideration of this. Point. So in the U.S. in the last couple of months, there's been some talk that maybe the SPAC market is cooling, mm -hmm. that investor interest is waning, maybe as we head into you know a tightening cycle with the Fed uh, expected to, to raise rates. Do you think maybe it's a little late for Japan to start uh, introducing uh, SPACs? <laughs> yes, uh, we have been following those uh, foreign regulators, you know, uh, we are thinking quite carefully. Uh, but you know, I think, you know, it is possible to make it possible, I mean, make the SPAC possible in Japan, and whether we can do the transactions, it depends on the actual needs of the issuers and also investors. So uh, I think, you know, uh, it's not uh, useless to discuss now, even if it looks like a little bit too late.